Hey and welcome to our tutorial. Today I will show you how to create this Dunkin' Donuts logo inside Microsoft PowerPoint. So the left one is an image, the right one is the logo created inside Microsoft PowerPoint. And you can see it's a little bit different, but hopefully we'll try to make it more similar to the original shape uh, during this tutorial. So let's get started. I will start with a blank presentation where I already have this logo pasted in. And I will of course start with the text because that's the easy part. So I will insert a text box where I will type in Dunkin' Donut, Donuts and I need this uh, apostrophe. And the easy part is because we already have the, or there is a font that you can download for free, which is called Debussy. Sorry, Deb Debussy, yeah, that's the one. It kind of looks similar to the logo, so that's, that's great. That would definitely save us a lot of time. So if I just move it over the original logo, it's, it's a little bit different, but not that much. And I will maybe erase this to maybe like 90, points that just seems fine but line spacing is a little bit too big so I will open the line spacing properties and set this to exactly be I don't know 80 points maybe 80 points is fine if I move it okay 80 points is fine so I will move it to the right side and what I can do is I can set the color so I'll select the first line and in the format text fill I will use the eyedropper tool to sample the orange color and of course use the same eyedropper tool to sample the second line which is the pink one so that's the text that's simple as it could be so let's move to the actual 3d cup and since you know it's a like a 3d extruded cup why don't we start with something similar in microsoft powerpoint so let's start with the shape being the oval which will be like the top part of the cup so i'll start with the oval and i will change the fill to be white and for now i may keep the blue outline so just you know the positioning will be easier for me I want this to be in the 3D, so I'll open the effects and in the 3D properties I will select one of those uh, isometric views, probably the top one, which is not visible in this video, so I can open it from here, shape effects, 3 rotation, top up isometric view, which is this one. Then I will add a little bit of uh, depth, so I will increase the depth to maybe like 50, that's probably too much, maybe like 30 points, and I want this to be, you know, kind of same. So I will start by playing with, the, with those six different uh, buttons to just uh, rotate this in the 3D space. So I'll rotate it like this, maybe a little bit more tilted, maybe I will rotate it like this, I will maybe resize it as well. And I don't care about the colors right now, actually, it's, it's fine that I have different colors, because I can. it's easier for me to position it in the 3D space. I may change the depth to be a little bit bigger, so maybe like 34 points. And I'm pretty happy with the you know 3D position and rotation in the space. So I'll move it to the right side and I will set the outline to be brown. So I'll sample this brown color and I don't want any kind of shading. So in the 3D properties in the lightning, I will probably set the light to be flat one. So I will select flat lighting, which is not helping that much. But when I set the depth to be white color, it should get away. So now the depth is in white color, which is what we want, but we want some kind of outline around the whole shape. So we'll set the contour to maybe like, I don't know, five points, and I will sample the same or use the same brown color for the contour. So since now we have the contour, we probably don't need the outline anymore. So if I set the line to no line, it should probably still look fine how we want it. I may still raise the contour like maybe to six points. Seems like it's it could be a little bit bigger. Okay, so that's like the main part, the top part. We want to create this main or bottom part of the cup. So I will duplicate this shape. But the problem is if I just raise the depth to maybe like, I don't know, 70 points or maybe like 90 points, the shape is a little bit different because the shape in the logo is getting smaller as we are extruding it. It's not possible to do it this way in, in Microsoft PowerPoint, but we can do something different and kind of similar. So I will set the depth to maybe like only five points. And what I will do instead, I will add the bevel. So I will add the bevel, which will be this angle one. And you can see something happen is happening, but it's a white color because the fill is set to white color. So for now I may change this to a different color, maybe like, I don't know, blue or so, so you can see what's happening. And if I start raising the height for the bevel, see what happens. We are getting a very similar shape because the width of the bevel is actually controlling, you know, the size of the bottom part. So we can just uh, stretch it or make it bigger. So what I will do is I will move it over the original one. I will probably set the contour to be no contour. We don't need contour for this one. 
and I will try to match the size and the shape. So I'll increase the height a little bit more. And I'm right now I'm matching the, the brown shape. And I will set the width to maybe like, I don't know, like this one. This one seems about fine, like 14 or 12 and a half points. So this should be the brown part. I will move it like this. And I of course have to set the fill color to be brown. And in order to get rid of those highlights over the bevel, I have to set the material to be without any highlights, which is this matte one. So this is like the, sorry, this is the brown part. I will copy paste this shape, make it a little bit smaller and just set the fill color to be white. Then I have to just, you know, position, sorry, I just moved it. I have to just position it properly over the first shape, just so there is kind of hint of the outline. It's actually not possible to use contour for this effect or any kind of effect, so I have to have two separate shapes, but I guess that's fine. Okay, now when we are satisfied with the result, I still may make it a little bit smaller. Okay, this is, seems fine. I will move the first shape to top and voila, we have a nice looking cup which kind of resembles the original one. So I can add the text, that should be easy as well. So I will add a new, insert a new text box where I will just type in DD. The font should be same as the below, so WC it is. First one is orange. You should still have this orange in here and as well as the pink in here. So I will set the text field to pink for the second one. And I'll, sorry, that's not working. And I will just rotate it in the 3D, not in the 3D, but in the 2D space. Make this a little bit bigger. It's not kind of matching the you know, label on the cup because that's kind of bended. We could probably add a little bit of bending using the text effects using the, uh, you know, transformation. Not quite sure. I haven't tried it previously, but something like warp down that probably should work, which is like bending it in, in a way that we want it to be. I will still change the size to be a little bit smaller. Now I have to resize the entire shape to make it a little bit smaller. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the result. It's even better than it was previously when I was showing you what we want to achieve. I will still set the contour for the first shape to be even bigger, like seven points. I kind of like this. Okay, so we have the cup, we want uh, the background for the cup and we want those curvy, like the steam, uh, whatever it is, effect. So I will start with the background, I will select a new shape being the rounded rectangle and I will try to trace it from the right side because I can see the corner in here, down here. I must to make it a little bit smaller and it's snapping to all those different parts so it's a little bit harder for me to set the size, right? and I will make the roundness of the corners a little bit smaller. Then what I will do is I will set the gradient fill going from orange to pink. So I will set the fill to be gradient going from orange. So first step should be, first step should be orange. The second step should be pink. I will get rid of those two. And I'm actually using, uh, setting the line. I want to set the line, I want to set the fill, sorry. The fill should be gradient fill. And what I will do is I will move those close to each other and then I will use the angle to just rotate this so the orange is on the left side and the pink is on the right side and that's perfectly fine because later on everything will be covered by this 3D cup so we will not see this uh, transition and we don't need two different shapes for having you know two different colors which is great. So let's actually move this uh, backwards but because we have this image I will use the selection pane to move this below the text box and the three ovals like this seems about right and I need uh, you know the white outline for the cup so what I will probably do is I will just copy this cup and just you know make it a little bit bigger and in the white color so I'll select this oval second and third oval I'm, I'm actually missing the fill so let's start with the fill like the coffee or chocolate whatever it is so I will use one of those I will copy sorry not this one but the first one the first one which is this one i will okay so that's the third one no i guess i'm having problems selecting the right one so here it is this is the one which i'm looking for so i will set the 3d extrusion to be no extruded and the fill should be brown 
and the I will sample the color one more time so it's a dark brown and the contour should be no contour so no contour because so we have basically have the same you know 3d shape but without any extrusion so we can make it smaller and move it like this to show like the uh, chocolate or coffee whatever it is it's probably chocolate seems like the color is still a little bit uh, off so i will sample it one more time from the, our actual 3d shape mm. It's kind of strange. That's be may may because maybe there is this 3D ness to it. Maybe if I change the material to matte, okay, that that will make it. If I change the material to matte to don't have any highlights, it will look fine. So that's it for the cup. Let's just uh, select all those shapes for the cup, and I will group it together. So I'll group and call it cup. I usually don't you know name my objects, but when I have a lot of them. It's probably a good idea to do it. Then I will copy paste this cup and move it to the same spot. I will hide the first one and I actually don't need this new oval. I don't need the text box and I don't even need the white fill down here. So I just need this one which will be white and I need this first one for which the contour will be white. Okay, so I will move this down here. I will show the original one and I will start resizing. So I'll first resize the top part a little bit, like this, and move it with my arrow keys. And I probably need to increase the depth a little bit more, just so it's covering also this, this part, like this. And for the second oval I'll also make it a little bit bigger. Okay, that was easy. I may move the background a little bit more to the right side just so it's being cropped, the white is being cropped on the left side and on the top. And I can finally move to the like a steam, uh, whatever it is, uh, maybe like steam spirals. So I will zoom all the way in over the spirals and I can see I have a lot of things going in there. I probably don't need this format uh, pane in here right now. And you know, it's kind of like a freehand but you know we can we can draw it freehand we can use this uh, freeform shape and try to draw it like this not quite sure if you can get the same shape using this method because it will be most likely very uh, wobbly to say at least you can probably use the draw tool it will be much smoother but you know still if you use your mouse like I'm doing right now not quite sure if you can get the very same shape so probably the best case is using a custom uh, freeform shape, but uh, not drawing it free freehand, but actually just uh, setting the points and converting it to Bezier curve. So I will start, start with a freeform shape, and maybe before I do so, I will sorry, I will open, I will select the image, and just fade it a little bit more. So I will select colors, this faded one, just so it's not getting our way when we are drawing a new shape. And I will select the freeform shape. I will start with this one and I will add points where the maximum points should be. If you are not quite sure what I'm doing, the last one should be here. And then I will press the enter key to close this shape or, or st stop drawing the shape. If you are not quite sure what I'm doing right now, you should watch my other tutorials about creating custom shapes. I got a lot of different tutorials covering this topic. I want to make this a little bit faster. So I'm moving in a, in a faster pace. So I will right click, select edit points. And for each point, I will select smooth point. Now, right off the bat, it will look kind of strange, but uh, once we start messing with those control points, it will be much better. So the first one should be pointing to the right side, and all the other ones should be either horizontal or vertical. This is actually horizontal. This one should be vertical, like this. This one should be horizontal, vertical, and the first one is pointing a little bit to the top. So shape kind of resembling the the old one i will use the same technique to trace the second so again insert shapes being the freeform shape and i will start adding the maximum points here 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 and last one here i will press the enter key right click edit points for each point i will right click then select smooth point just so we can see the handles and those handles are behaving like being connected to each other so we are getting the smooth point and again this should be horizontal this should be vertical horizontal vertical and the last one or first one pointing to the top this should be 
horizontal sorry vertical and this should be a little bit pointing to the right side so i'm happy with the result i will zoom out maybe before i zoom out i'll right click and select format sorry format shape i will select those two shapes and for the line i will increase the size to maybe like i don't know five points five points seems about right i want those uh, connection or the endings of those lines to be around it so i'll select the cap type to be around and i will move it uh, over our cup like this for the picture i will reset the colors so i'll select the reset picture and i will set the same brown color for the line for those uh, steam whatever it is and immediately you can see there is something a little bit different you know below the steam there is a white color so i'll maybe you know cover the background using some custom symbols instead of duplicating this and having it a bolder outline so i'll insert a new shape being maybe the oval which i will draw it like this and set the fill to be white fill no outline move it below those uh, steams and maybe duplicate it one more time for this part i know kind of like not very elegant solution but it works then i can finally zoom out and i will select cups and all the other elements and the background i will group everything together then I have just to zoom out to make sure that everything is kind of positioned properly in the middle. And that's it. That's how you create a Dunkin Donuts logo inside Microsoft PowerPoint. I don't want to say in no time because you know this time it took a little bit more time. But you know, definitely we were using some uh, shortcuts and helpers from PowerPoint to get this 3D shape right without too much hassling. And that's it. Thanks for watching.